Today's episode of Real Talk Christian Podcast is sponsored by the Christian Standard Bible. The goal of the CSB is to be faithful to the original languages without sacrificing clarity, all while maintaining both accuracy and readability. With beautiful designs and multiple study Bible options, everyone from adults to teens and even children can find a CSB Bible that they enjoy. Learn more at csbible.com. Again, that's csbible.com. Welcome to Real Talk Christian Podcast, where we drink coffee and have real conversations on faith, culture, and society. This is Mark Hyde. And I think it's Chris Fuller. You think it's Chris Fuller? I think so. You think so? I think so. Well, today we have a special <laughs> episode for you guys. We're sitting down with Brian and Jackie McCobb of Little Neighbors Paraguay to hear their story about how they are changing not just children's lives, but the government system as well. Fuller, you ready? <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. So you think you're Christian Fuller, huh? I I, th- I think I don't know. It's been I a feel lot. like you're making fun of me right now. I did no such thing. I think you're making fun of me, dude. I love you, Mark. Um, so it seems like every time we have a guest interview, we're like we're ready, we're set up, and then yours truly does something. Not just always. Dumb. Sometimes it's technical. And sometimes, sometimes it's technical. Sometimes it's me. Like there's the it's one time we talked with uh, the pastor of All Souls Church, Pastor uh, Matt Nichols. Yep, Matt Nichols. And uh, his face things. was frozen the half of the Skype conversation. Rodney Buse. Rodney uh, we, Buse. We were way lagged off on the video. Actually, some was good and some was bad. So yeah. that was just a tech oops. But guys, we're trying so hard. We're trying so hard. <laughs> this is what happens when, you know, we don't get a lot of coffee in us before the show that's true or maybe it's too much coffee. it's also it's a tuesday we're it, recording on a tuesday, tuesday not a friday and work has been weird we've been dealing with family issues and we haven't sat down together people don't know this yeah but we haven't sat down in at least what six, six weeks? weeks yeah something like six weeks yeah we had a luckily we had a lot of backlog and then you and beth, and then beth uh, and i sat down at sat our, down in our in our living room goodness. and tried to do that yeah so we had a lot of uh health problems in my household and uh We're under quarantine, so... But we're back, baby. We're back, baby. We are back, ready to go. We got some good coffee. We're going to have some good conversations. So I'm thinking, Fuller, let's not do too long of the banter. Okay. Because, you know, we want to make sure we get Jackie and Brian... I mean, we got a lot of stuff to cover We have a lot of stuff, and I would love um, to keep this thing under three hours. So that would be amazing. We kind of have to, because I got to go to work in like an hour and 15 minutes. I got to leave, so, you know. I don't uh, don't work, so it's cool. Yeah, that's, so that's a lot I do let's work. see here. All right, so let's talk about the coffee real fast. You talk about this. I've never heard of this company okay. before. So th- I've heard of them once, and it was the last time I was down in Disney World. Okay. So as you guys may remember, uh, Janelle and I and the kids and my in-laws went to Disney World. That's Which, how was it, by the way? No masks? You got the fireworks show no, no, again? No, no, no. The day we left to go there, they... Uh, instituted masks on oh, rides and indoors, again. but it was fine. Okay. Actually, the kids did great with good, it. Good, 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 good. Um, it was a great time for us. Not so much for my in-laws. They ended up coming down with COVID and getting desperately sick. And actually, by the time we got back, um, they were hospitalized. So, but you're very but, good but, experience but for them. They're they're on the up though. But they're on the uptick now. And uh, my mother-in-law's home. My father-in-law is is recovering. Um, they're both recovering well. My father-in-law is just a little bit slower, but he's he's getting there. And uh, by God's grace and glory, he will uh, he'll be up on the upswing here. Shortly. Now, is Janelle doing okay? She's doing good. Yeah, she's doing good. Yep. So, but anyways, while we were down there, um, we stopped at a place called Jeffrey's. So Which they, I've never heard of this place They're in Disney before. Springs during most of the Disney parks, and they're actually a roastery out of Tampa Bay, Florida. Um, oh, so they're, they're, see this they're local down. Cause I haven't even looked at the bag yet. And so you just poured me coffee. This, uh, this blend that they have is the Jamaican meat crazy. And it's, which we've had other Jamaican meat crazy right. in the podcast. And so this is like a caramel vanilla, a vanilla and, uh, like a coffee liqueur type taste to it. Liqueur. Liqueur. Um, it's a, it, I, I would say it's like a medium to medium. So it's like a full city to full city plus roast. I would say it's a little beyond um, medium. It's like a medium darkness, but it's not a dark roast. But it does it. It's not like a French roast. It's like a, it's like a full city plus roast. I think it's that because it, it, it kind of has a bit of a, um, uh, 
What's the Hawaiian coffee? Like a Kona? Yeah, it has a bit like of a Kona, Kona flavor vibe to yeah, it. Yeah, it, it does. A little bit, a little bit of a, a Jamaican Blue Mountain, but it's not. It's not Jamaican Blue Mountain beans. Right. These are um, uh, just beans. I'm not even sure. I was looking. I was trying to find where they actually got the beans it from. Arabic it beans. doesn't. Yeah, just standard right, Arabic beans. It, exactly. And I don't know exactly. There's probably a blend. To be honest. Normally, Jamaican me crazy. I like better as it gets cold. But so I think as we go, it's, I mean, right now well, it's typically, good, but typically I don't like. Like blends, like artisan no, blends, like blends. this. But this, well, I, when I smelled it in the in, in the Jeffries, I was like, "Oh, that smells really good." So I'm gonna try it. And I'm like, "If I don't like it, okay, whatever. You know, it is what it is. I gave it a shot, but it's really good. I think I'm actually gonna order another bag. So you can actually buy this online and have it shipped to you from Jeffries. Uh, J O F F R E Y. If you're on YouTube, show them real quick. Just show them the bag on YouTube. It looks uh, like a bag of Albanese gummy bears. Yeah, so um, (laughs) they also do a lot of teas, specialty teas and stuff like that, too. They get fancy. Um, Really good place. So that's what we're drinking tonight. I love it. Well, hey, dude. And we did it in the V60. We did it in the V60, which uh, Ryan Coatney, episode 72, I think, Uh, something like that. (laughs) I don't know. We got too many episodes. I think 72. It was easy in the beginning to be like, oh, yeah, episode two, episode four, you know. No, No, it's too much Andrew Wood was 73. I nailed that in last episode. When you listen to it, I just pulled that one out my butt (laughs) and I nailed it. So I think this is 72. Um, But we actually, so we read the last review we had in Apple Podcast, but we actually got a comment on Podbean. Because we host our stuff on Podbean, which right. gives us into the Podbean community. And someone here, um, their name, they're, they're, they just have usernames. So their username is Pillar.Swanson. And they said, found you guys, uh, found your guys' podcast literally today. Have been feeling fr- distant from God for over a year. Your words, your insight, and your personal experiences are slowly getting and bringing me back to Christ. Mm. Thank you. That's pretty cool. cool, man. Keep listening. There's a lot of episodes. You know, I was <laughs> talking with uh, my grandpa, actually. He was in town for the weekend, and he was just asking. like, like He thinks we're going to be the next like uh, Chuck Swindoll or Charles Stanley. <laughs> I'm like, no, Gramps. That's not how this that, works. That would be cool, but I don't think we're there. But, he was like, he, but then he was like, so I, since I live in Florida, am I able to listen? I'm like, Gramps, we got listeners in India, South Africa. We got listeners in Northern Ireland. We got listeners in Canada, yep. and hopefully in Peru. We Peru. are ranking. We are we are charting in we Peru are charting right now. In Peru. Bro. We are charting in Peru, <laughs> and maybe after this conversation, we'll be charting in Paraguay. Maybe that'd be pretty cool. But either way, it's just whenever people leave us uh, either messages on Podbean or Instagram or Facebook, leaves us a review on Apple Podcast. I know I feel this way, and Fuller, you can speak into it. But it's kind of one of those things where. Sometimes podcasting can feel a little lonely, or it's just you and me talking. We're like, oh, we hope somebody listens. Unless we have guests on, right? But uh, but like you Brian never but, but today, you never but, know who is out there listening. It, you know, it also it, you know not to say we like get prideful because of it, but it is something like uh, it's it's nice to know that people are listening and, care. and are enjoying it. Yeah, and, and, you know? the, and that what we're saying is is speaking and helping them and and because that's what that's that's the goal. That's what we're here for is to help everybody have those conversations that don't typically get had or conversations like we're going to have today with, um, you know, different people working throughout the world. Uh, and that's what it's about. It's about bringing people closer to Jesus and, and going on this walk, not alone, but together. And that's why I like today's conversation where, you know, as Southern Baptists, you know, that's, that's just a church we go to. Right. We're not die hard Southern Baptists. We just both happen to, oops, find ourselves at this church and yep, we're, right. here we are. Yep. But we don't get to talk to missionaries that much. Like, mm-hmm. you know, growing up in the conservative, independent, fundamental Baptist church, we had our own set of missionaries and right. every, I mean, the church I went to was big enough for every few months we were having missionaries come in. So we were meeting their kids. We were learning their customs, their mm-hmm. cultures. They would come into our chapels and actually bring clothes and other pictures and video. It was so cool. Yeah. But, you know, Here I, it doesn't happen. That's right. I think of my teenagers <laughs> like, the, I mean, we, we adopted a Compassion International kid, right. um, which was uh, not adopted. That's not true. We sponsored a Compassion International Compassion International. Child, I'm just going to stop talking. Um, but then, but we were also trying to have these conversations with other people and right. other ministries because that's not standard right. in our in our church world. So that's no, why it's super sta- cool that we can bring people. We do, we do in the, like the, and have these conversations. the Annie Armstrong offerings. Yeah, they distribute the money to the missionaries, and it's kind of hush hush. And, and we and, watch videos, but right. we don't get to talk with the missionaries. Right, you know? exactly. So it's, and so it's very nice and it's refreshing to yeah. hear what it's what it's like in other parts of the world right now, and listening to our brothers and sisters in Christ and the great work they're doing for Christ out there in the world. Yeah, so. definitely. And this is our second conversation with the missionary. Now, Joe and Kimberly were not on the field yet. They, are, they are on the now. field yeah. right now. Right. But I am really excited about this one um, because Beth and I actually, like, we partner with 
little neighbors, actually. Mm-hmm. We support them financially. We actually help create a giving campaign for them. Um, Beth, I know because of just the way school has been going, we haven't been able to keep up with it, but Beth, for a little bit, was helping run the social media for them as well, and right. Jackie and Beth are, are absolutely great friends. So I'm really excited for this conversation, but we talked enough about Brian and Jackie. What so do you think we, we should bring them in? Let's just get them on. Hey, uh, hey, there they are. I was like, can you guys hear us, Brian and Jackie? <laughs> Look at Brian's hey, face. He's so excited to be here. <laughs> awesome. I think, yeah, we can hear you guys. So you guys, just to make sure, you guys are coming to us, well, not live because this isn't a live show. Wait, but Wait, Mark, what's, what? what's her name again? Wow. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, Talk yeah. about a faller. Talk about a faller. We almost went live. Well, we, we started recording, and I was like, Brian is well, it's take, it's brain take, fart. Let's it's take, take three. three. So the first time you played the Christmas jingle. Yeah, instead of the intro. And then the second time you were like, Brian, and uh, her name escapes me. <laughs> like, that's... Uh, that's bad podcast. That's really bad. Right I actually texted... <laughs> I'm in a group chat with... Um, what? That was so bad. But I'm in a group chat with Jackie and Beth, and I texted them during the intro. Jackie, I don't know if you saw it. I said, yeah, I, I, already, I already messed up. Yep, I got it. Yep, it's yep, all right. you got it. But you guys are actually in Paraguay right now, right? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, we are calling from Luque, Paraguay. Okay, so, so yeah. for us, I mean, I know we have people all over, all over the world. And so for someone who doesn't know Paraguay very well, like, I mean, I know the country's in South America. But are you guys a coastal country as well? Like, are you guys on the coast or are you guys landlocked? Oh, we wish. First, you forget my name, and then you remind me that I'm landlocked. Thank you so much. No, there's no You're coast. You're fired. There's I'm no fired coast. from this show. <laughs> Beth lied and said I, we were professionals, but we're not professionals. You're the professional. <laughs> I'm trying to be. I'm trying to hold it together. I just want to go to I, – I just need to go to bed. So, anyways, yeah. uh, so what's the, the what's no, the location? No ocean, but. Yeah, we're right in the middle of the country, uh, Paraguay, the continent, or yeah. the continent. Paraguay calls themselves the heart of South America because we're right right in the middle. Oh, that's really so. cool, actually. I did yeah. not know that. That's pretty awesome. Now, are you guys both from Paraguay? Or are you guys from the States? Or where do you guys come from? I'm from a little town called Boston. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've never heard of that one. Tiny place. Yeah. I mean, not many we, people know about we it. We beat that place called Boston College almost every year in football. So, so are you a know. Red Sox fan? Oh, we're talking about football <laughs> and winning. We could talk about the Patriots. I don't oh, know. Ugh, I'm a Bears You mean fan. Tampa Bay? <laughs> I thought he's at Tampa Bay now. Oh, man. What? <laughs> I'm not an NFL fan. I'm not an NFL He's talking about I'm Tom Brady. I'm talking about, at, yeah. He's talking yeah. about Brady because now the Patriots are nothing without Brady is what he's referring to. Brian, <laughs> uh, I don't know. In in Belichick, we trust. Okay? <laughs> I love it. Deflate gate, deflate gate. <laughs> so so uh, goodness. So Brian, you're Boston. Jackie, are you from Boston as well, or where are you from? No, I was I was born about forty minutes north of Boston, but I grew up in Venezuela, South America. So I'm oh. a missionary kid that uh, decided to become a missionary as an adult. So That's awesome. I. We were in a city in Venezuela for like the first 10 or 12 years of my parents' ministry. And then we moved to this tiny little Indian village in the middle of the Amazon, like mm. legit. Wow. So wow. It was like two weeks on canoe yeah. to get there. This is like legit. Like cooking over a fire, um, pooping in an outhouse. The so river basically what Fuller does when he goes on his camping weekend I mean, that's trips. just what, uh, that's what I call camping, luxury. <laughs> I don't go camping anymore because people are like, you don't like camping. Oh, you're such a wuss or whatever. I'm like, no, I did the I, camping. I lived, lived it. Your life was <laughs> a camp. Yeah. Like, I, I can camp. I just will not anymore. Jaguars and Pumas, you know. Yeah. She yeah. enjoys like indoor Tarzan plumbing now. crap, man. <laughs> She likes the indoor plumbing. So, with you guys are at in Paraguay, I had I had this. This is okay. So, I have to admit, some of my questions might sound stupid, but these are just the ones that caught my head. Because I was talking with Joe and Kimberly down in Peru, and I'm like, "What is it like?" So, I mean, I've I mean, I'm, I Facetime with them, and I'm like, "Okay, show me around the house. I want to see what the culture's like." They Facetime me in a grocery store that felt like they were in a in a Walmart. Are you guys is is your guys's country in the city where you guys live? Is it more like a second world? Is it still considered first world? Like for us Western Americans who are clueless, like let us in a little bit on what Paraguay is like. Yeah, so it would be considered a third world country. Okay. But we um, are a, a country in development. There's uh, The economy is, is actually growing, uh, doing quite well in spite of, you know, 2020, it continued to grow. You know, obviously there are some downfalls, but... You know, there's malls that we just got. My uh, Forever 21 is in the mall. There's a gap in the mall. <laughs> it's wow. like a legit thing. 
yeah. 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 Uh, we have McDonald's, Burger King, Domino's, Pizza Hut. They're everywhere, um, man. McDonald's. PFC, so we can survive, yes. Yeah, so, you know, <laughs> you get out of the capital city, it's a little bit different, a little slower, um, you know, more quaint, I guess, or yeah, whatever. So, but so, And we live outside the capital city in, 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 in a suburb, and we love it. I mean, it's a, a beautiful place to live, a very family-friendly yeah. and safe and People are kind and open and warm. Yeah. I mean, and and having said that, there will be cows on the highway all of a sudden, <laughs> or you know, horse drum that we forget about. Like that's just, just what we call Goshen. Well, I say, I'm like, we have horses and <laughs> we, have, we have Amish. <laughs> yeah. So we forget about it, and then we have visitors from the states, and they're like, "Why is there a cow? You know, in front of your house?" And we're like, "Eh, yeah, whatever." That's the so we had like Billy. Our, the first house we lived in in Paraguay, there was a World Cup soccer player that lived right in front of us. And then the lady next to him had chickens running around her yard. She had a, got her water from a well. So it's just like you have really, really well-to-do people. And then literally right next door is, is somebody who just lives very simply with, mm. you know, throws corn on the grass and feeds yeah. their chickens. Wow. And that's, just, that's something I've always loved about Paraguay is there's yeah. not a big division between the social classes. I guess. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because I remember that was something we talked with Joe and Kimberly about was there was like a rich class and a poor class and there was some segregation there because of that. So yeah, you guys there is, does, there is does yeah, exist yeah. that. Uh, but I don't know. I think most overall of, it's yeah. I don't know. You might see a big mansion and then like a tiny house that's about to fall over right next to it. And wow. So property could be worth literally a million dollars. And they're like, I don't want to move. This is my grandpa's land. I'm not moving. So okay. if we could put it in perspective for our listeners, like what's the average household income in Paraguay? So um, probably around um, $800 a month. So yeah. Wow. <laughs> that, that, that's, that's, uh, that's pretty, pretty substantially less than what we're used to here in the States. <laughs> that's unreal. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, but that would even even allow somebody to own a own a little motorcycle, get back and forth to work. Mm -hmm. um, they'd have an, uh, a barbecue, you know, because here people oh. we we don't go to McDonald's, we go buy steak. So literally, for the same price as buying McDonald's meals for our family, we could eat uh, grass fed ribeyes. Uh, for I'm moving to Paraguay. Family. See you later, Mark. <laughs> that ain't gonna be good for your body, my friend. <laughs> It's, we we have prime rib like pretty much once a week. Once a week. Yeah. Yeah. It's what? a pound. <laughs> so, you know. Don't rub yeah. it in or Yo, anything. No, <laughs> I got the seven kids, so we rock like. Let's go. We legit rock like we chicken can, nuggies we can move and hot our dogs. We can move our TC to Paraguay. You know, but see, here's the here's the thing with that. If I say, hey, Beth, we're moving to Paraguay. She goes, all right. Let's go. Hey, let's go. <laughs> Janine would be like, see ya. <laughs> yeah, Janine would be like, bye. Have fun down there. <laughs> So if you guys don't mind me asking, how did you guys end up in Paraguay? Like, was it just a, a, a heart pull? Did you guys visit the country and just felt called to, to minister there? Or how did you guys find yourself doing what you're doing down there? Well, actually, like we grew up in those independent fundamental Baptist churches that you just mentioned where you saw missionaries, right, mm -hmm. coming in and out. Mm -hmm. And I'm a missionary kid. And I had missionaries in, in my church. church at least once a month. My pastor, and I love him for it, was huge into missions and getting missions in front of people. Mm -hmm. But one of the countries that we'd never met a missionary to was was Paraguay. Mm -hmm. And so since we were like, all right, well, we're going to get married and we're going to be missionaries in Latin America, uh, where are we going to go? And honestly, it, it was as simple as we took out a map and started looking at countries and we'd never heard like Paraguay was like, oh, OK, there's Paraguay. I, yeah. I didn't know anything about it. And it was literally like, all right, well, let's talk to people. And so we made a couple of phone calls and emails. And then we came and visited and like, all right, here we go. Hmm. So it wasn't like, oh, we felt this No huge... big aha moment. Um, yeah, we just came down. And our survey trip, we always had the mindset of, let's see what tools we need to get the job done, you know, because this is where we're going. So we came kind of ready to, yeah, pick it. That we sounds had like God's will playground theory to me. <laughs> Or was it? Or was it? <laughs> no, but that's the thing. Like we, we actually had a couple different conversations on this podcast about so many people wait for this uh, yeah. road to Damascus experience or the Jesus rose again from the dead, and I felt the 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 holes in his hands and the and the hole in his side, and rather and they just sit down and wait. And I know that was a big thing with Beth, where she felt called to foster care, so she's like, um, 
there's people out there who need help, so I'm going to do it. And it sounds like that was the same with you guys with Paraguay is the fact yeah, of there, there needs that, to have something here. So let's a, go. There was a verse. Um, I'm pretty sure it was Abraham sent his servant to go find his son, a wife. It oh, yeah. One of the patriarchs, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. And the, and the, and the phrase is I being in the way the Lord led me. Mm-hmm. And so it was just like, all right, let's just take one step, one step, one step. And I, and basically, that's what Little Neighbors is. It's like, let's just take one step, and until we can't walk anymore, until we hit the wall, we're just going to just just walk, continue to walk forward towards mm-hmm. this goal. And and it's not like this huge, you know, Holy Spirit l- l- putting down a, a light. It, I mean, well, that'd be nice. I, yeah. So, but, so tell us a little bit about Little Neighbors. You know, you mentioned it, you know, me being a States guy and you know, I'm not Beth, so I don't really know a whole lot about <laughs> Little Neighbors. And so uh, if you guys, you know, let, what, what is Little Neighbors? What do you guys do at Little Neighbors? Um, how did it get started? Those types of things. All right. So that's a let, let's start with how did it get started? Because and we'll just kind of yeah. jump from why we chose Paraguay to how Little Neighbors got started mm-hmm. in like a minute. All right. All buckle right, up. Go. I'm ready to drink my coffee. Okay. Go for it. <laughs> so we came to Paraguay and we were like, we're going to start a church and we're going to be involved in church planting and training of church leaders. And that was like laser focused in on that. And can I interrupt? Helped- what year was that? That was 2006. Oh, cool. When we got okay. here. Yeah. Yeah. So we were approved as missionaries in 2003, and then we got here in 2006. Okay. Um, and then we got here, and we're like, we're just going to do that. We helped start two churches, uh, one very close to where we are right now, and then another one about five hours away. And we found out after a short time, like, just church planting wasn't wasn't where our where we fit. I just mm-hmm. we just neither of us felt like we were. That was where we needed to be. And so we say we got involved in in orphan care and the care for the vulnerable children of Paraguay almost by tripping our way and fall, <laughs> stumbling our way into it. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that was not all. That was very much not. And that's a story for another day because that's a really long story. But <laughs> sounds like God's perfect. So we, we were uh, we were you know, and invited to to help out. And maybe Jackie can tell from there. Yeah. So we were invited to help out for a week at an orphanage or a group home, I guess is what they are mostly known by in the States. And, and we had always talked about like one day when we're retired, we're going to go to an orphanage in Africa and work with orphans. And won't that be nice and adorable? Right. And so for some reason that was like in the future after the real missions work was done. (laughs) Yep. And, um, but then we found ourselves in this place, like, this isn't right. We're not using our gifts. We're not, you know, we're not in, I don't know. We just feel like we were flourishing. Yeah. 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 So we had this opportunity to go visit, um, my sister who was teaching English at this group home in Paraguay. And so we went to spend like three days and we ended up spending eight days and, you know, and it just kept going on and on. And we're like helping out cutting the grass. I think you butchered a goat that week. We had never. Wait, wait you just said that like yes. no one's business. Oh, you butchered a goat. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah that was. So, we don't. Welcome so to Boston. It, after that week was over, <laughs> they were like, hey, would you guys want to help out and just be on our support staff? And we were like, uh, OK. And so that was kind of the short story about how we stumbled into it. First and, job, butcher and, a goat. <laughs> yeah. And so. Yeah, and then we had to butcher, and then we want one story like we're butchering a cow, and they're like, "Here, hold his tail. Don't, don't do that." <laughs> um, but so I learned because in Boston, there's not a lot of uh, not butcher shops. So, yeah. so we, moral of the story is: get married, find a random country to go be a missionary at, and then butcher a goat and a cow, and then hey, there you go. Yeah, That's how you get involved the missions there. work. You're Goodness, <laughs> my That's city boy, it. I'm sweating. Around. I'm yeah. like, I can't do that. Nope. Mm-mm. Yeah. So we uh, and then we started like, all right, we can take kids to doctor's appointments and Mm -hmm. we can, I don't know, just do whatever. And we basically did every job that there was to do. We didn't do it always well. No, we did it. We did the jobs. (laughs) Um, And especially the goat one was was done poorly, very poorly. (laughs) Um, you could yeah. ask the goat. He would be very much. <laughs> he was very disappointed. Yeah. So, oh, my goodness. Yeah. Uh, so and then finally, after a few years, we were invited to take over as as the general directors. Uh, we became uh, foster parents ourselves mm. in that process of, of uh, two kids who had grown up in the children's home 
And uh, anyway, so that's how we got stumbled into to orphan care. And really, it was those those two kids that we had in foster care that really challenged our way of thinking. Because one of our goals for the orphanage was really to get it to be li- as much like a family as we could. So how can we make this residential children's home as much like a family? And there was always that word like. Mm. It was always like a family. Mm-hmm. And we couldn't get rid of that word. So as much as we tried to make it like a family, it was only ever going to be like a family. And the next step was finding Family. families. Right. And so right. we saw how well the the kids, the two kids that were with us in foster care flourished in our crazy family dynamic that was very much imperfect and and nuts, but but we saw how well they did and we said, "Well, why can't this be uh why why can't we pursue this option for for kids in Paraguay, the yeah. rest of the kids?" And so and we had a a good friend from Costa Rica who had um done a lot of family-based care in Costa Rica. And he came down and asked us what, what would happen to our four daughters. So we have four daughters, ages 16 to seven. Um, there's a lot of hormones in yeah. my home. Yeah. Brian's a very mm-hmm. great man. Yeah. Mark understands. Yeah. And Even our dog is, is a female. <laughs> oh, dog. See, I at least had a boy and cat. cat. So, so, so you guys have the four girls and then the two foster kids. Yeah. Okay. Well, no. The two foster kids are not are, are no longer with us. They're both uh, they're both adults, adults now. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Mm. Yeah. But um, you know, he, he this friend asked us. He said, "What would you? I mean, what are the options for your daughters? Should you and Brian die or something happen?" And we're like, "Well, you know, they'll go with my parents." And he's like, "Well, what if they can't?" And they go with Brian's parents. What if they can't? You go with your siblings. So he basically what if they assassinated, get? He murdered, murdered all of our family. <laughs> And then, and then we're like, That's a great uh, and we're thinking like friends in Boston and friends in Venezuela, you know, I'm just thinking all these families and friends that I love that I would trust to take care of my daughters. And he said, you know, you've named a lot of people and you've gone through a really long list and you've not once mentioned the children's home that you are a director of. Mm. And that for me was like wow. a, a punch in the gut. Cause I'm like, why am I working so hard to create a place that I'm not I'm not willing for my daughters to grow up in. Yeah. And Paraguay's children deserve the best of me and they deserve the best of our ministry. And so we really took a step back um, we, and started to really rethink our whole program. You know, what did we want to provide for these children that so desperately needed care? What did we want that to look like? And so, I mean, one of the questions that we asked today for our team when they're interviewing a foster family is like, would you trust your kids with them? And if they say no, then we're like, it's not happening. You're not making it through the program, you know? Mm. So that's how we view it. Yeah. And which is to say too, for those out there who are supporting orphanages, children's homes across the world, or maybe you're part of an orphanage or a children's home, just not to say that those people are bad people. Mm -hmm. Uh, We know lots of people both here in Paraguay and across the world uh, that are doing wonderful, wonderful work. Uh, helping kids. And right now in Paraguay, of the 1,300 some odd kids in care, only about 60 are in foster care right Mm -hmm. now. Um, So the vast majority of those kids are being cared for and loved and served in an orphanage or in a children's home setting. So we're not saying that those are the enemies or those are bad people. What we're trying to say is, is let's expand the menu of options that kids have. Mm-hmm. So when a judge or whoever's making the decisions is gonna sit down and look at the options, well, maybe if they're looking at what's gonna to happen to a 16-year-old young man who's struggling with addictions, he's not gonna put him in Aunt Sally's you know, house right, off, right, right after his last hit of heroin. He's probably gonna say, you know what, maybe a group home is gonna work well, or a group of five siblings, they're going to be hard to find a foster family for a big, big group of siblings. Mm-hmm. And maybe a group home would be the best option for those those people. But when you look at younger kids, the vast majority of kids are going to do better in a family based setting. So let's see if we can provide or open the menu that's a, that's available for for these kids. So with those kids that are down in the group homes right now in Paraguay, what's what's the situation like? Is it something where cuz like I know here in the states there's a lot of uh, work programs and even here in South Bend if kids are in group homes and then they graduate from there, there's next steps they can take. Is that the Ooh. same thing for you guys down in Paraguay? Like I, I'm just thinking a, a kid walks into a group home, what happens? 
Yeah, and 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 so a lot of times we we just in 2019 finished a, a study with the Supreme Court of Paraguay and the public. You guys, as in little neighbors, right? Right. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we have a national movement called Paraguay Protects Families that is is pursuing family based care, strengthening orphanages, strengthening the government's response. So in 2019, we we did that study. And one of the things we found was the average time, average stay for, for kids in homes is around six years. And so for a lot of kids, and we know kids personally who've been in, in children's homes for, for 10, 12 years in group homes. And so uh, a lot of times they'll go, they'll grow up there, spend their formative years, and then when they turn 18 or 20 or 22, and, and we, don't really, we don't know of any place here that once you turn 18, you're kicked out. I know that's the reality for kids in a lot of programs in the US. Um, but eventually that child is going to become an adult and is going to have to go somewhere. It's not like you have a bunch of 40 year olds kind of walking around, stumbling around the, the group home still because they haven't <laughs> left yet. Yep. Eventually Forever they're going to go somewhere. And, and for a lot of kids here in Paraguay, uh, it's like, it's just a cliff and they're, they're terrified of what's going to happen. And so from, as far as little neighbors, we've developed a program uh, called Yahapa, which comes from a, a phrase in the Guarani language, which is one of the national languages, uh, the indigenous language of Paraguay. It it, it's, uh, it means let's go together, says the guy who's terrified. So <laughs> we have our... <laughs> we Can I just say this is... I love this. <laughs> <laughs> say that again. It, it's called Yahapa. Uh, uh, how do you say it? Yahapa? Yahapa hei okujewa. Uh, which means let's go together, says the guy who's terrified. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so we go in. It's basically a big brother, big sister program. Mm -hmm. And we recruit and train and accompany uh, families who maybe aren't ready to take the plunge for, for foster care or adoption, but would say, hey, I can go visit once a month or twice a month uh, a, a child, a, a young adult or a 15-year-old in, uh, in an orphanage or in their children, uh, children's home, group home. And then walk with them, visit with them, help them with their homework, build a relationship so that when they do reach that age, uh, at that time when they're going to launch out into adulthood, they're going to um, have somebody of, of confidence, somebody who they know, somebody who they trust, who's going to be able to help them find an apartment. You know, I think of my own life every time I talk to my mom and dad every single week, at least once a week. Uh, you know, I'm 40 years old. I figure, you know, I'm I've got most things fairly well squared away, but I still want to talk, get some advice. <laughs> well, Wait Jackie doesn't, Jackie doesn't quite think so. <laughs> Jackie's got her yeah. crap together, but not That's, Brian. <laughs> not, so much. not so much. So I'm still wanting advice, you know, counsel from my folks, but who is that person that these kids are going to call? Mm -hmm. And so we're saying, Hey, that should be a Christian who steps into this kid's life and, and says, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to be there for you through thick and thin. And, um, so yeah. 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 So what are all the, I, I don't know if it is, is ministries programs. I'm not sure what you guys call them down there. Um, but what are the various different programs and involvements you guys are in right now with little neighbors? Cause it seems like you all guys right. do a lot. So we have three, see the three little leaves. On oh, they actually mean something. Yes, yeah. they do. Well, Beth so, didn't tell me that. Yeah. So we have the, probably the biggest program we have or the one that takes the most kind of focus and attention is the foster care. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's, we're building that and trying to grow that as much as possible. Then we have the mentorship program. And then the third one is uh, raising awareness for adoption. And we are specifically looking for families to adopt like sibling groups or priority adoption cases. So most people in Paraguay are signed up to adopt infants and they can wait for years and years and years because that's not the biggest need, right? The biggest need is the older kid that needs a family. And so you always yeah. say, you know, we're looking for families for these kids, not kids for your family. Yeah. So unfortunately, most people, and it's true in the States, most people, when they're thinking about adoption, they're thinking about that little baby, that newborn. <clears throat> so you take it home and, and um, you know, but but very few times are, are you considering or do, do people consider that's not a bad thing. Again, we're not saying you're the enemy if you want to adopt a baby, you know, right. give me a break. No, but not not by any stretch of the imagination. But what we are saying is maybe, you know, I posted something on our our uh, Instagram today uh, in Spanish, but it was I, I thought 
I, I always th- wondered if I was ready to adopt until I realized no kid was ever ready to be an orphan. Mm. Well, okay. Truth bomb. <laughs> so that's, that's mm-hmm. Yeah, so let's flip that way of thinking. Let's flip that thing on its head. So when we're thinking, lots, because lots of times when we're thinking about doing good things and helping others, we're just saying, hey, God, can I, I want to impact this world and I want to change somebody's life. But just so long as it doesn't cost me anything, mm. just so long as you don't ask me to do something that's hard, mm-hmm. you know, and 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 so even in our way, when we think about doing something good, sometimes we we even in our intent to, to be charitable, we're, we're thinking, well, I'll mentor a kid, but just as long as he's not a punk, you know, <laughs> uh, or, you know, I, I'll, I'll adopt somebody, but just, you know, I, I'll never consider adopting that 12 year old who really has a, 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 a grumpy demeanor about them, but chip on his shoulder, a chip maybe. on his shoulder. But maybe that's just because nobody's taken the time to love them. Right. You know? Hmm. So, yeah. So those are our three, uh, I, the word in Spanish is ejes. I don't know what it is in three branches, branches, the sure. three yeah. branches. Yeah. The, the, the three, I would say focuses that, that little neighbors have. I don't want to keep asking all the questions, Fuller. Are there any questions that, that pop up I'm into just, your mind? I'm just listening. I'm learning. <laughs> well, I have another question just, if you don't have one. Go for it, man. All right, so this is something that I'm still trying to fully understand, and Beth has kind of explained to me, but she's like, just talk to Brian and Jackie, and they might be able to answer it more. Um, she she said something about, and, and maybe I misunderstood, but you guys working with the government to actually change the system itself? Is, yeah. is that something you guys are still working on? Yeah, so we're we're constantly working with the government. Um, we just had in 2020 a brand new law come out. Matter of fact, Jackie, pass that notebook. We have nobody's going to be able to read it or see it or whatever. But this is uh, a result of a study. We're actually looking at it today, um, looking at some pro- possible projects to to begin implementing um, in Paraguay. But yeah, we're working with the government. Uh, we've got a brand new adoption foster care law from 2020. Uh, that hopefully will will help more kids be in families. Now, when you uh, say a new law, like what was the old law and what's this new one like? Yes. Yeah, so, so theoretically, it's going to help kids get adopted. Kids who need to be adopted get their adoption processes done quicker. Mm-hmm. Because in the 80s, there was a lot of 80s and 90s uh, or up until the 90s, I guess I should say. There was a lot of um, human trafficking is basically what yeah. it boils down to. So kids being bought and sold. Um, and you know, somebody will fly down from, from the States and well meaning and not knowing what exactly was going on behind the scenes yeah. was buying a baby from, yeah. You so know, they'll pay the fee woman, yeah. and really they don't know this, but the, 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 you know, the adoptive family who's come from the U S or overseas from Europe, uh, they don't know, understand that, but their adoption fee is just a bribe and they're buying a baby from a mother, you mm-hmm. know, or what, mm-hmm. or paying off a judge. And so Paraguay cut adoptions. I mean, they just made it so difficult to adopt because they needed to stop the Which human makes sense. Yeah, it's a response to the trafficking. Yeah, yeah right. to, say, to stop the sale of babies. Right. You don't sell people. Right. Uh, but, but then they went to the other extreme and made it so difficult. So hopefully this new law is going to make it easier for people who, who want to adopt and do that good thing to have the, the process in place for it to be done well. And then also... They're uh, they're now official according to this new law. It's officially recognized uh, foster care as a as a real thing and mm. something subject and oversight uh, of law. So um, that's pretty and exciting. We, yeah, and we also try to act as a bridge between resources in the states or England or Costa Rica and bring that in. So uh, in September, we're doing this big um, trauma informed care training through Texas Christian University. Okay. And most of the CPS workers are going to be doing it, which is amazing. And um, yeah, so like we have the director of Center of Adoptions number. I tech WhatsApp her all the time. And we're in communication with a lot of these top people, which yeah. is amazing That's that cool. we have this secular government saying, can you please help us? You know, they're looking at the church and they're saying, please help us. And so mm-hmm. we don't want to turn an ear to that. We want to listen and then we want to. Do it well. We want to offer high quality in the name of Jesus. You know, make sure that we're yeah. We're so doing we even uh, go before the Supreme Court. We'll be before the Senate uh, or Congress. We had lunch, uh, what or dinner a couple year, maybe a year or two ago with the Vice President of the country. And so you know, little old me, 
<laughs> we never, this, you know, this we little old Boston not, kid. Not <laughs> kid from Boston. No one those things in seminary. No yeah. one, no. There was so no just, Bible college course on how to uh, eat with the vice president yeah. you know, from a foreign country. So, yeah. so if, if you guys don't mind me asking this, because this is a conversation that we had, I wanted to pull up to make sure I got the episode right. Episode ninety-five. We had the conversation about do our works follow us after death? Because mm. you know something that we hear a lot here in the states is the fact of the only things that last are the word of God and the souls of men. So we shouldn't be out there worrying about physical needs or tangible things because there's other people who do that. We just need to focus on winning people to Jesus. But yeah. it sounds like you guys are taking a bit of a different approach. So I guess my question is more: Why are you guys focusing on this physical need rather than just church planning? And, All right, and, you so, know, evangelism. So that's a great question. I love that question. And I think we should ask Jesus to answer it for us. And so let's go to Jesus. Jesus is on the cross. Jesus is dying for the sins of the world. He is paying the price for our redemption and our salvation. He is about to suffer the, the biggest uh, punishment that any anyone has ever, ever received by being and we don't know in some way rejected by the father and the and the 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 son will be obscured and and Jesus is on the cross and what does he say to his mother he looks he at says, peter right he looks john. at john well john. he says john. Uh, john he says to john here's your mom here's your new mom and he says to mary here's your new son so wow while Jesus was in the middle of redeeming mankind in the world, he was caring for a woman who was about to become a, 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 a true widow. And he was telling John that he was now part of Mary's family and Mary was part of his. So I think that's a beautiful example of, of yeah, let's, let's be sharing the gospel. Let us never, ever think that just because we're giving somebody a, a, a bowl of food or, or some, a glass of water to drink, that we don't have to also uh, share verbally the message of Christ and the hope of the gospel. But I think James is pretty clear that our, our, our faith, if we're not evidencing it with works, is dead. And even James 127 is not, I, I love it that I, I was, uh, heard a sermon a couple years ago. Um, I forget who was preaching it, but he said, he said James 127 is not a command. You know, what is religion? Pure religion, undefiled before God, our Father, is this, that we would uh, visit the, the orphan and the widow and keep ourselves unspotted from the world. It's not a command. Jesus isn't saying, go do this. But if, in fact, we are true followers of Jesus, we will be evidencing that. And if there's no evidence, and James says, the evidence of that is biting your tongue. You got to watch out for that one. Uh-oh. <laughs> and, then also, and then also caring for the orphan and the widow. And according to James, and so by proxy, according to God, if we are not caring for the orphan and the widow and watching our tongue, then we might need to double check our salvation. If no one feels the warmth of our Christianity, you know, no one feels the warmth of the fire of our Christianity, then maybe we don't have one. Mm. I got goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Goodness. And I think that, I mean, our, our whole why, the why we do this is so that children can better know and understand their heavenly father. Mm -hmm. And so I can go to a child that has never had a father or who has had an abusive father. And I can say, God is your father. And that will terrify that child. And so I want to bring that child to a place where he can know a good and kind and loving father. So that when I say God is your father, he's not terrified. Because we and were he's teaching, to you know, when we got to the orphanage, we were telling these kids, oh, let's pray. And God, you're, for me, that made sense because my dad loved me, took care of me. He provided for me. He loved my mom well, loved my brother well, mm -hmm. worked hard. So when I learned in Sunday school, God's my dad. It's like, that's amazing. Yeah. But for when we're teaching these kids who come from, well, my dad's abusive. My dad, you know, abused me in unbelievable ways, you know. We, we, we know, know kids who can't even control their bowel movements because of the way they've been abused. You know, mm -hmm. sorry, explicit content. No, we know, sorry, right? we need That's the reality. And then you just say, with no other context, let's pray God's your, you know, because God's your father. He loves you so much. What in the world does that mean to a kid who's been abused, mistreated, or abandoned by his dad? It means nothing. 
And so what is the purpose? And I always say the purpose for marriage isn't just so we can have kids, isn't just so we can, you know, be together. The purpose of marriage is to image the love of God for his church and for his people Mm -hmm. so that our kids, when they grow up, they can see, all right, my dad's imperfect, but I kind of get a good idea about how God, what God is like. So our, the reason why we're doing this is completely and utterly drenched in in scripture, in the gospel, in theology, because we believe that God loves the orphan and the widow. And as Christians, we need to be doing something about it. And are you guys able to exclusive, not not exclusively, that's not the right word, explicitly share your faith? Like when you sat down with the vice president, we're like, hey, we do this because God loves us, so we need to love others. Like, are you guys able to be explicit? We We prayed with them and yeah, we totally do that. Yeah, absolutely. There is absolutely no, uh, they're begging us for help. And it's like, well, if you're going to ask us for help, well, we're going to give it to you just the way (laughs) we think you need it, you know? And so, yeah, we have no, we are unashamedly a Christian organization. Um, You know, we've got scripture on our webpage and, um, you know, we, they know that I was a pastor you know, the evangelical Baptist church. Yeah. They know that we're recruiting families from churches and, yeah. and I mean, and they're asking us to do it and to keep doing it. They like what they see so far. So it's called being the hands and feet of Jesus right there. Yeah, <laughs> It's more than just saying you're a Christian. It's living it out. So. And I feel like, you know, this is something that we don't understand as comfortable Western Christians. And, and I don't know if you've gone back and listened to the message that Scott preached on Sunday at church, but he was, the, or it might've been two Sundays ago, but he basically was saying, we as Christians like to stay in our comfort zone because we don't need God in our comfort zone. Right. It's when you step outside your comfort zone that all of a sudden you can't do it. God has to do something. And it sounds like for you guys, you basically, you guys don't even know what a comfort zone is. We haven't been comfortable in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> she hasn't been comfortable since she was living in the Amazon camping. <laughs> Pooping an outhouse. <laughs> now, but with all the hard work, though, I mean, it sounds like, I mean, it, it sounds like you guys are honestly doing, I mean, obviously it's kingdom work. And so there's a lot of spiritual benefits that you guys get, but are there also physical, tangible, cool victories, or I, I don't want to say wins, because that sounds, I don't know why that just sounds dirty in this conversation, but really cool testimonies of like, this is things that we've been able to see and witness and experience because of Little Neighbors. Yeah, we have um, one story in particular that a baby girl, I think she was about a month, a month and a half, was placed with one of our Christian, you know, Christ-loving families, well cared for beautifully for about eight months. Um, And then we began, we didn't get the legal authority of her case until she was about seven months old. So that's why it kind of took a long time because we move pretty quickly once we get in charge of a case. But once we had that, we started like, where's her family? Where's her biological family? Her mom is an addict struggling and was not going to be able to care for her. But we found an aunt who lived about two hours away from the mom. Yeah. And, you know, made contact with her. We're able to place the baby with her. And, and she's very safe and she's thriving. She just had her first birthday a few days ago. Our team was visiting her today. She's yeah. doing beautifully. And her mom is slowly walking away from drugs, has gone to visit mm-hmm. her has stayed with her for a week. She's getting healthy. The sisters are talking again after years of not communicating. And so that to us is just, is a miracle to think about. And and we're just so amazed that, you know, because we're not, we're not equipped. We're not social workers. We're not psychologists. We just love Jesus and we love kids. Mm. And And we, but we do have, we do have those people on our team. So it's not like (laughs) us being like, oh, let's go around and we'll pray for people. And, uh, you know, rack them up the social workers. Yeah, there's like professionals involved in, in, on our team and, and who they're are, not who hurting are doing the snakes or work. anything. No. They're, they're not doing the snake bite thing. You guys aren't doing that? Uh, well, we tried that, but the government did get upset. They, they looked a little know. down on that one. <laughs> we're not cool with that one. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, so that's a story where we've seen, I guess, redemption and healing yeah. and something that we couldn't do. Because as missionaries, one of the biggest lessons sometimes is just stepping back and letting mm-hmm. God do it. And the white faces aren't always needed there, you know? And so it's, it's beautiful to see that happening. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there was another, another story, uh, a little girl, you know, just, there's so many stories we could share about little kids who are finding families and it's not about us. And really the fact of the matter is, is some people, Oh, you must love getting to see kids all day. It's like, I don't ever see any kids. 
because mm. we don't have them in. They're not like in our office. We're right. in our office right now, and there's no kids here. Right. And we have a big thing of gum over there for for kids when they do come in, but it's only ever our workers that are the only ones who ever <laughs> eat it. Um, our lawyer really loves gum. Our lawyer so. loves that gum. <laughs> and but but it's because we're not the ones doing the work. It's the local church here in Paraguay, the Christians here who are who are the ones doing it. Because again, it's not about Jackie and Brian. It's about Christians here, yeah. you know, and, 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 and again, you don't even have to come to Paraguay to do this because we remember we were talking about, uh, at the beginning of our story, we were going to go to Africa. Mm -hmm. We were going to go to Africa. And, and after we finished, you know, real pastoral ministry missions ministry, we were going to go there and we were going to help kids in an orphanage. Little did we know our very first Bible study in Paraguay I was fresh out of Bible college. I was there. We've got pictures, and I'm like there in my white shirt and my tie. <laughs> so ridiculous. And, so out of place. Yeah, and literally, <laughs> there are chickens running around my feet. There's a little parrot hanging from a tree over in the corner. And, you know, there's just a bunch of people sitting in. One of these uh, things is not like the other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, but, but 10 blocks from that Bible study. As Jackie and I were thinking, oh, one day we'll go to Africa and work in an orphanage. Ten blocks from that Bible study, there there were six kids who eventually wound up at the orphanage that we worked at. Hmm. And when we realized that, after getting to the orphanage and working and being, we realized God just telling us, you don't have to go to Africa. You don't have to go to Par come to Paraguay. To, to pursue and show love and stand up for the orphan, for the vulnerable children, for these vulnerable families, because they're in your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. You know, I look at every time, and I forget what state you got. What state are you guys in? Indiana. 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 I pulled up the Ohio numbers. <laughs> but um, We like Ohio. We just don't like Ohio State. Yeah. Okay. All right. Ooh, buck so, guys. <laughs> so right now in Ohio, there's... And I'm sorry, I should have pulled up the Indiana ones. But right. right now in Ohio, there's 15,262 kids in foster care. Mm -hmm. There are 10,610 churches in Ohio. You know, so what would it look like if every church, there's 3,177 kids in Ohio waiting for a forever family through adoption. So what would it look like for Christians in Ohio to become more active, not just to think about the orphan in Paraguay or the orphan in in uh, in Africa or the orphan around the world, Be because once the orphaned or vulnerable child has a face and a name, everything changes. Yeah, and and it's easy for people, I think, very easy for people to think about the orphan crisis, but when you know the child or the young adult, and you think, how could how could I just stand by idly and not do anything? Mm -hmm. um, it's a real shame. So, so yeah, hmm. that's the end of that talk. I don't know <laughs> how to segue out of that. Well, but, but that's just it. Cause like, you know, here in America, like obviously like we have a different perspective on things just because of Beth. And we talked with Andrew Wood of Knoxville well, Hope Resource Beth Center. And Nicole Hobble. Nicole well, Hobble. Yeah. Which, which I mean, she was the one who connected us with, with Beth, Beth, which then <laughs> obviously, with I mean, and, well, connected, wow. Beth connected with me and then we got, you so. know, but, you know, but so that we, we have been exposed to the beauty of, of foster care in terms mm -hmm. of there's kids out there that need families. And it's, I'm not going to, I mean, it's, it's hard. Like, I feel like for me, you know, all of a sudden I went from two kids to seven, five of those came out of foster care and they all have different special needs. I'm, I'm going to be lying if I say it's super easy and I'm the world's greatest dad all the time, right. you know? And, you know, we what? have, well, I mean, I am, I think so. Um, Wait a minute. I'm the, I have the world's greatest dad. Coffee ah, right? I'm the be world's greatest dad between the hours of 8 p.m. And 6 a.m. when they sleep in. That's, that's, that's more so. I it. thought you were going to say when you were sleeping. Yeah, that's true, too. I've been falling asleep at 930 lately because I'm tired. But, you know, it's, it's not easy. It's hard. And, you know, like we have multiple therapies we go to every week. I mean, we were I was running a little late today because we had one therapy with one kid in one place and another therapy with another kid in another place. But at the end of the day, it's we do this because they need, like, well, I should say Beth did it because she's like, these kids need a home. This is what God's called us to do. Why am I just sitting on my hands and not doing anything mm -hmm. about it? And, you know, and we're all called to different ministries. And I know you guys would agree with that too. You know, we can't all be the hands 
Some of us yeah, have yeah. to be the feet. Some of us have to be the brain. Some of us got to be the kidney. And some I like of, to be the earwax. You have to be the earwax. I'm the earwax of the body. <laughs> I was going to say you're the bladder. <laughs> oh, but, oh, that you know, too. <laughs> hey, got hey, to gotta go. Got to yeah. go. <laughs> but, you know, it's we all have different parts to play. But at the end of the day, you know, we we talked about that passage in James all the time where it mm-hmm. says, you, you say you got faith, but let me show you my faith by my works. And, and what that actually tangibly means. Um, I was going to ask you guys to, to kind of close us out with a, a, a word or thought that you guys could give us people who, let's be honest, are very comfortable, but I think you guys absolutely knocked it out of the park. I mean, I, I mean, yeah, it doesn't get much better than, than what they just said. So, <laughs> I mean, I guess the last question that, that I have for you guys is what are ways that they could either, uh, not they, what are, what are ways that we as listeners can actually maybe support you guys with little neighbors? What are ways we can connect with you guys, learn more about the ministry right. opportunities, maybe that people can have to just partner with you guys? Yeah. So, uh, I actually checked it out. There's 11,791 kids in Indiana in foster care. So now you know. 11,000. <laughs> yeah, wow. that's a lot of kids. So one of the great things about us as we, as we talk about this, as opposed to church planting, uh, when, we, when we challenge people in the United States or wherever they are about orphan care, vulnerable children, is, you, again, you don't have to go to Africa or Paraguay to do it. They're in your neighborhood. So one of the great ways is just by getting involved, loving a vulnerable family, that, that loving a vulnerable child, whether it's in your Sunday school class, big brother, big sister program, or, or becoming a foster adoptive parent. One way to help us directly is by uh, you, you can support us monthly. We are looking right now for monthly donors to come in and stand with us and say, hey, we believe in what you're doing. We want to be a part of that and help you be a blessing and reach more kids in Paraguay. That would be definitely one way to do that, whether that's through one-time donation or a monthly do- donation, which really does go a long way to help us on those monthly donations. But Yeah, and you can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Instagram. You go to littleneighbors.org. Yeah. And we'll, and we'll so, put all this in the show notes too, yeah, so that yeah. way people don't yeah. have to necessarily remember all the, all, all the stuff. Um, this popped in my head real quick. Cause I know this is something that missionaries used, used to talk about all the time in, in the churches that I grew up in at least, but when someone gives, let's just say like 10 bucks, right? 10 bucks a month towards you guys. What does that translate for you guys in terms of that $10? Like, how does that work in Paraguay? If that like makes the sense. Currency yeah. Or what yeah. Do you do yeah. With like, like I, like I know like compassion international, like, you know, when, when you sponsor a child, you give, whatever it is, a, a month, and they say, well, that actually means this much money in this country, and here's what all this money is for and goes towards and all that kind of stuff. All right. If that makes sense. You, you go ahead. Okay, so, yeah, so that'll go for paying our social worker, paying our psychologist, our lawyer. That'll pay for the gas that helps our team get and visit this little girl's, like we did, we were talking about, uh, they visited today, this little girl. That'll pay for workshops to train and recruit and uh, uh, the foster families or the mentor families. Um, It's gonna go to putting the lights on in her office and paying the (laughs) internet. And that's not really super exciting, but those are things that that need to be done. Um, But but yeah, it's gonna be training and and recruiting more families. It can buy buy bus fare for the teenager that leaves the children's home and needs to get to work and they don't have any money to start off with. We help them with groceries sometimes. We help them with bus fare you know, buy them like a nice outfit for an interview if they need it. So the needs are all over the place. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. It it totally does. I was just thinking, you know, because as Americans, it's like, Oh, 10 bucks, isn't going to do much like, you know, but for you guys, I know it goes a long way just to have those partners. For sure. Yeah, it will definitely make an impact on the life of a of a young person here yeah. on a child and we, or family. You know, we are also looking for local donation. We are actively fundraising in country as well because we want this program to outlast us. We don't want this to be Brian and Jackie's thing. We want this to be the Paraguayan church ministry that just continues right. well past our time. And so we are not um, you know, only raising money in the States. We want this to be really self-sustaining. That's our long-term goal. And we just need some help getting started so that mm-hmm. we can really kind of prove the model and get working and show the Paraguayan church like, hey, we can do this. Let's go. Right. That's cool. Well, hey, before we let you guys go, we end today's conversation. Is there anything else you would like to say to the listeners or even to us, just either a word of encouragement or something that you guys wanted to say, but just didn't have a chance? 
Yes, if you want to donate, you should do it now because Mark is going to match your donation. So oh, I think I wasn't sure if you were going to bring that up or not. Oh. So <laughs> Beth and I, we we pledge that up to five hundred dollar donations. If people do monthly donations, we will match that up to five hundred bucks. Nice. And we're just getting started with that. Nice. Yeah, and we've we've already seen some results, and it's really really encouraging. So thank you guys for having us. Thank you for donating, and we look forward to seeing. Can what we, we just have tell the story about our first local donor? Sure. sure. So our first local donor was a teenager who aged out of an uh, of a children's home here, and she said she gave she was making three hundred dollars a month, and she. Came, came in and said, I'm gonna start supporting you guys $14 a month uh, out of my salary because I never got to be, fam be in a family. I never got what you guys are offering to these kids and I wanna help and be a part. And it's really, really small and it really doesn't mean much maybe, but I just wanna help other kids get in families. And that was our first local donor. Wow. Yeah. And you know, I, I, that, those are the people who convinced me to s stick what I'm doing. It's not the, the judges. It's not the, the vice president. It's not the director of the center of adoptions. It's the kids who grew up without a family and were saying, that's what I wanted. I, it was nice to have a clothes. It was from the States. It was nice to have a roof over my head and a, a place to live in the children's home. But what I really wanted was, was a family. And that's yeah. what convinced me. And, and this is someone who is struggling with God and has some anger issues. And we can understand that because of what she's gone through. But when I shared the story with Beth and then Beth and Mark did the matching campaign, I shared with this young lady, I said, do you realize that your $14 has just turned into $500 and possibly more? And she began to weep. And she said, I can't believe that God could do that with my little offering. And I said, well, he can. Hmm. So, so that's, that's, cool. that's the gospel just taking shape before our eyes. So um, say the URL again real quick, just so that people, if they want to give right now, they can. Yes. So you can go to littleneighbors.org and then uh, there's a donate tab. You click that. That'll take you right to our missions, uh, mission agency website. You can uh, give right on there, whether that's through credit card, uh, automatic, to automatic withdrawal of your checking account or the address if you still write checks. You'll, it'll be address will be there. And then are people able to make a little note on that too? Like if they want to write RTC, just so you guys can try to figure out where all the donations come from, or is that not really a thing? Yeah. Yeah, they could. They okay. can make they a totally note. Yeah. Yeah. I think that'd be cool. Well, Fuller, yeah, any other questions you got my dude or I have nothing. I feel like just, I talked a lot. This I'm just episode. basking in the stories and, um, and, and what they're doing, the ministry. That's so. cool. I actually, it's kind of nice getting to sit back and be a listener for once. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, Brian, Jackie, it was an absolute honor Thank to you meet so you guys. Thank you so much for being on. But we can't let you go yet because for the last, we, we did do fun facts with Fuller, even though Fuller, you were not here last episode. Did you do them? Beth pulled two out of the Sweet. top of her head. And I'm like, you are ridiculous. I know because you were like, hey, send me a fun fact. And I totally spaced It's out. cool, bro. You, you've sorry. been dealing with a lot of other stuff. So the way we, I know you guys are still new to the podcast, but the way we have ended every single show since episode one is we have done a fun fact with Fuller. And it started off with a episode one. It was awkward. We didn't really know what we were doing. I'm like, hey, Fuller, you got a fun fact to end the episode? And you just pulled one out like that. And they were yeah. like, this will be a tradition. And so, it has been for over 100 episodes now. <laughs> so, Fuller, you ready for your fun fact? I suppose. Let's, uh, let's dive into it. Time for Fun Facts with Fuller. <laughs> and those are his kids that's my family <laughs> <laughs> i love it well dude so, let's land this plane what fun fact you got to close us out well, man? well so this is more it's a fact it's uh, a fact and since we had brian and jackie on i wanted to put it out there because it has to do with kids okay so did you know that more human twins are being born now than ever before really how do you, you track that so do you get the feeling that there are more twins around these days than there used to be? Uh, well, you should, because according to a new study in the journal Human Reproduction, the twinning rate has increased by one-third since the 80s, up from 9 to 12, tins, 12 twins per 1,000 deliveries. Currently, that adds up to about 1.6 million twins born each year across the world, meaning one out of every 42 babies is a twin. It's That's crazy, unreal. 
Like, that's so, really weird. I have a different fun fact for you, though. Apes. That's what that means. <laughs> so you guys are going to be busy for a while. <laughs> did you guys know that the redhead gene is starting to disappear, too? What? There's fewer redheads because of the pure Irish and Celtic red hair gene. It's such a regenerative gene. It's starting to disappear. Wow. I did not know that. Yeah. I found that out and I was so sad because, I mean, you guys know Nora, our fiery little redhead. Like, Oh, yeah. I mean, she's, she's so cute, though. She, uh, dude. All those girls are so cute. Homegirl went to speech therapy and had that speech therapist wrapped around her little four-year-old finger. I'm like, this girl's going to get candy I just, so much in this thing. I, I have to admit, I love Mia's curls. She gets little, them from her dad. The, the little you know, bouncy. She gets yeah, them from whatever. me. Whatever. <laughs> oh, goodness. Anyway. Goodness. But Brian, Jackie, we want to thank you guys again for joining yes, us on, so on this episode. And listeners, just like always, feel free to reach out to us. RealtalkChristianPodcast.com is literally the easiest place to go. Feel free to check the show notes to get all the information on Little Neighbors and how to connect with us online as well. And I actually forgot the phone number last episode. I blanked on that one. 574-400-5352. I think I maybe got it right. Did you? Because I blanked and I just like threw numbers out there. But also don't forget that uh, this is brought to you today by Lifeway. Yep, the CSB. And the CSB Study Bible. Uh, go ahead and check them out. I don't know. Are they still doing the promotion for their... Uh, the the goat skin the, the goat Bible? Skin Bible? I don't know if they are. I don't not. know. We, have we need a, to reach but, out to But her. they are sending us the next script because we are continuing our partnership with the CSB translation to help keep bringing you guys more conversations. We're super excited about that partnership. And Brian, Jackie, we're super excited to partner with you guys as well awesome thanks for the time you bet guys well hey until next time take it easy